Hello. So, day something on Orange Dawn. So I'm going to go on to the next kind of faster part, kind of go over how I practice that. Um, and yeah, just, just kind of show how it's been going. Um, I think I've had this piece for a little over a week now, even though I haven't necessarily recorded practicing every day. Um, so let's see if that's in shot. Oh yeah, it is. Um, cool. So let's start um, about here. So I kind of went over how I practiced last time, but I'm um, just going to kind of do some warm-ups on it. Um, there's a tenuto mark on some of these notes, in this case two G's and an A, and it repeats three times. So those notes you can kind of hold just a little bit longer in performance practice. Uh, but generally when I kind of warm up with them, I just try to keep it kind of robotic. part kind of practice it proportionally like that um, obviously you know it has to go much faster but um, stylistically you'd want to hold these kind of those downbeats just a little longer this tends to be kind of just a race through um, at least from the recordings I've heard so that would kind of sound like this <laughs> Ooh, that was really not good was it uh, so Another part I find about the high A, it's like about the first four or five notes of it that are the trickiest, the A, A, G, F, E, D. I find once I get past that, I can do the run really easy, but if those first, any of those first four to five notes kind of go wrong, uh, it's usually when I'm like, oh no. Uh, so let me try it one more time from here. I, it's just really this group right here, this kind of piece that I think needs the most cleaning up. Uh, but certainly I think it's a lot better than the first time I attempted it too. Uh, I'm trying to really, in my mind, I'm focusing kind of on those first five notes, making sure that motion is really smooth. And then I find once I get there, I can kind of race through that run. And certainly you can hold that high just, just a little longer. Maybe not that long, but right. Yeah, um, yeah. so just kind of working slowly like that uh, in chunks proportionally and working on those problem spots for me is kind of the first five notes is uh, the most beneficial I find in practice. I find that this part here and this part here is actually really, really um, easy. Um, there's not, it's not super complicated. I just find that higher note finger combination is kind of where I usually struggle, uh, at least in my personal practice. Um, so here, the way I would practice it is, you know, you kind of have this melody of those repeated eighth note um, D naturals. So that's really, you know, what you want to come out as a melody, even though your fingers are going through those runs. Um, and then same thing here. This one, yes. Um, this D, these quarter notes, right, are really what the melody is. D minor seven chord, and it, it's actually composed really well to emphasize the D minor seven chord. D to C to D, D to D to D, A to F to D, C to A to D, and those are all notes of that D seven chord. So um, D minor seven chord. So it kind of it's composed really well to where it emphasizes itself, and it, it fits really well in the fingers. Uh, but the way I like to first practice this before is I would kind of play what the melody is. And that's really what you want to emphasize most once you add those runs. Um, 
So you know, it's coming out as the melody and everything else is kind of coming out as this, this really nice effect. Um, but let's move on to the next page. Um, so I find when practicing this next page, um, you want to practice it by the phrases that are written out by breath mark. Um, so I would do, I would do, you know, these two lines, there's a breath mark there. So I would practice this as one. And what I kind of like to do, it's almost like a piano, I like to do right hand, left hand, and then try to put them together. Um, so I'm going to go through and, you know, practice this just on camera and just kind of show how I would practice. But I'm going to start with the runs right here. Um, obviously, you know, these aren't true 16th notes because they were, if they were true 16th notes, there would be four per beat. Um, but then you kind of have this chord note thing, and you know, we're not violin, we can't really play two lines simultaneously, we're not piano, we can't play two lines simultaneously. Uh, so, you know, we kind of have to find a way to make this even and come out as if we're playing melody, but we're also accompanying ourselves and, you know, create that illusion that, you know, we're doing two things at once, even though we're not. Um, and that's part of the challenge here. Um, so practicing kind of right hand, left hand together, I think helps to, to create that illusion better. Uh, so yeah, so let's start with these runs here and I'm going to practice them from phrase to phrase. Um, and I'm actually going to practice with the metronome too, to make sure I'm doing it in tempo. If you look at the piano part here, the piano part has um, a very consistent line. You know, just at straight eighth notes. Um, so, you know, you have to play in a way too that makes sense. You know, if it was just like whole notes, you know, it wouldn't necessarily matter if you, you know, fudge the rhythm kind of here or there, but, you know, it's very consistent one and two and kind of like a metronome going on um, in the accompaniment. So I'm actually going to practice this with the metronome as well. Uh, not that fast, though. It's a little over tempo. <laughs> things I like to do things with three repetitions so I'm actually gonna practice that left hand three times so that was one important as you're practicing this too, even if it's with a metronome and even if it's a way under tempo, that you keep in mind some, some sort of idea of what you want to do with that phrase, where you're trying to push things and pull things away musically, and that you practice that too. Because um, that's really how you're going to create that illusion that you're accompanying yourself more than anything, is making sure those quarter notes on top have a direction to phrase, and that, um, you know, if you're in a really nice room, it might even echo a little bit to really help solidify that illusion. You know, you have right hand, left hand, and now you kind of have to glue them together. I kind of talked about that before. So now you have those two pieces and you want to glue them together. Um, and so it's important to remember the dynamic where you've left those quarter notes um, after you go from here to here. So that way you can keep that phrasing going. Um, you know, just to exaggerate, let's say this one was at forte and then I play this and then suddenly this one's at piano. That's very jarring. That doesn't really help the phrasing. And that's not how I played it when I isolated it. I didn't go, you know, I didn't change dynamics so suddenly like that. So I want to really remember where I'm leaving off dynamically here so I can help that phrasing be continuous. And obviously I don't necessarily want this to be like super dramatically different either. Um, 
So the phrasing's okay. I, I feel like when the, I have the pieces together technically, and I just need to work on that phrasing. practice this phrase and so now I want to go on to the next phrase and so I'm going to practice this part. So another thing too that you can do to kind of help glue it together before you do just the whole thing is you can do the chord note, the first note of the run, the last note of the run, and then the next chord note. So that would kind of sound like this. I think harder than just doing the whole thing, but that can kind of help solidify some of those patterns too. Mm. Uh, okay, cool. And so when you make a mistake, it's important to just go back to the start of the phrase and isolate where the mistake was. So I made a mistake here, so I'm going to isolate that specific spot now. And then I'm going to try it again from the beginning. Well, not the beginning again, but, you know, the beginning of that phrase. And then I like to do things in three repetitions. And so I messed up there. playing this you want to try to your best to look maybe one or two beats ahead to kind of prep for it I, you know it, I find if I isolate like this it's like that's easy enough but sometimes what tricks me and what's tricking me now too is I'm not really looking ahead so that FTD natural relationship really isn't super hard I'm just not prepared for it because I'm not able I'm not looking ahead like I should be Yeah, I think that's what happened. 
um, and then I would go on to the next phrase. So this next phrase is actually only one line. So I gotta, I gotta remember that phrasing right there. Turn to crescendo. So I need to get louder. So the biggest 
thing, and it's super obvious, I think, obviously when you're practicing, but I think the biggest thing with this section is that you're listening to yourself and you're making sure that all those notes are coming out. You know, these are all groups of five, so you're kind of like, was that five notes or was it four or was it six? You know, maybe another note kind of slip in or something like that. Um, and just making sure that, you know, really you're only doing what's on the page. Because um, <laughs> it's already hard enough as it is, so we certainly don't need to be adding extra notes or doing things that we need to do to make us, like, strict time or anything like that. Um, so, let me see where I'm at. Time wise. Okay. So, I will do the next section, but um, I would practice this next section the same and just, ooh, excuse me, uh, by phrases and just doing the same thing. Um, if you're having a hard time getting it, you can slow down the tempo, but I would recommend just kind of going back to, you know, right hand, left hand together and doing it like that. Um, or even just isolating the chunks. I'm practicing by phrase, but you could certainly just practice by measure too, and, that, and then, you know, kind of practice those two measures and do the same thing where you're kind of gluing them together, so to speak. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me.